Oh, it's my pleasure to welcome you all for our second Samwad on a very important topic. We have been waiting for long uh, to, um, for this Samwad. As, as uh, Germ uh, Indians living here and uh, with our responsibilities as parents or maybe several um, enthusiastic um, participants. So we have been waiting to understand how can we um, learn more about opportunities for our um, kids and their developmental um, opportunities. So, and also we have many burning questions um, and now and then, and uh, it's always good to hear from experts, um, what are the pathways we can learn um, for our kids. So we, it's a pleasure to welcome you, uh, Mrs. Sush, to, for our uh, somewhat Germany. So, um, so thank you for joining and, um, and we will hope uh, we'll have a fantastic somewhat today. And, uh, and I also welcome all the participants and uh, representatives from various organizations um, for this important topic. And, um, and you'll hear more from uh, about our uh, guest speaker and, uh, and about us, a somewhat Germany team in the next um, few moments. So with this, um, I would like to take you to the next uh, slide. Yeah, so here I would like to give you a short overview of our session flow today. So we'll have the welcome session followed by a short introduction to Samoa Germany and followed by guest introduction uh, by our Samoa team colleagues. And then we will have somewhat on the topic of German schooling and ecosystem of schools, kids and parents. And at the end, we'll have opportunity for Q&A. So please put your questions in the chat box. And if you're watching us through Facebook, please put, uh, put your questions in Facebook as well. So we will take up the questions as, as much as possible during the end of the session. So finally, this will be followed by a word of thanks and then we close this uh, summer session uh, in about one and a half hours from now. With this, um, let me give you a short introduction about our team. In the next slide, I would like to show you uh, the purpose. Uh, what is um, what is our aims and objectives of the, the team? Nikhil, if you could take us to the next slide. Thank you. So basically, uh, who are we? We are a group of intellectuals and cultural leaders interested to engage in an authentic and open dialogue with German and Indian community to understand the local challenges with an integrated solutions approach. We actually engage with the society by inviting experts and intellectuals and cultural leaders from German and Indian community for open dialogue and discussion on various topics relevant in Germany. We, our focus is to have monthly session. Um, we already had first uh, summer session um, in 2020. So in the next slide, you will see the um, short um, topic that's about Indians in Germany and their social network, Dr. Carsten Bush was uh, addressing us on this uh, special topic as well in our first somewhat. So if you're interested, please um, search um, somewhat Germany, you will um, get the recording of our previous somewhat. In the next slide, I would like to give you a short um, quote from Rugwet. Ano badraha krabat kratavo yantu vishwataha. That means let noble thoughts come to us from all direction. With this positive intent, I welcome everyone to this um, somewhat. So please enjoy the session and um, please uh, feel free to ask questions and uh, we will certainly try our best to take up your question during this session. With that, I request uh, Siriji to uh, introduce our guest speaker. Thank you. Namaste and hello to everyone. 
Um, allow me to be upfront about today's topic of Samvad, that is German schooling system. I'm sure uh, this topic would top the list of topics that is widely discussed among us Indian parents. Most of us are not part of German schooling system as students here, but as parents uh, anticipating to get our uh, kids educated in Germany, we would have many questions and concerns. Uh, when we are talking about education of kids, we are also talking about not just the academic needs, but also about the uh, emotional and the social needs of the child. Uh, today we have among us Mrs. Suzanne Such to help us explore the different dimensions of German schooling system. She is the acting principal of Stadisches Werner von Siemens Gymnasium Munich, and she is also the part of uh, school leadership since 2012 the vice principal since 2016. And uh, good to know that she is specialized in language teaching. And she has recently contested for the Gemeinderat in Egmating. And uh, love to see that she is a sports enthusiast and is into skiing, hiking, and biking. Now, uh, she's heading the Bruke Fierzin project, the new initiative in the Nauperlak München region. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into the Samvad with Rashmiji and Frau Suzanne Such. Hearty welcome. Hearty welcome once again, uh, Mrs. Such. Thank you very much, Siri, for this uh, beautiful welcome. Thank you. Okay. okay. Namaste, everyone. Good evening. So, once again, we welcome you all to this most awaited session and the most debated topic in the Indian households, German schooling. So can we remove this slide, Nikilji? And you can pin Mrs. Such. So once again, I start. Namaste, good evening, good evening. And I'm very happy and proud to be moderator for this summer session. Once again, welcome to this most awaited session, a topic which is like a hop gerisht for all of us in Indian household. I often say this to Mrs. Such that it's a hop by no? Education is an important topic in our on our dinner plate that you can just cannot separate that anymore. So whenever I knock on the doors for any reason, she say, yeah, how do you worry so much? Sorry, that's how it is. So I'm not the only one. I'm very sure there are plenty, not just plenty, almost all Indian mama papas for us education is something on par with every other precious topic. So before we kick start the real conversation, as I say, why this theme during this January, February, March is mainly because this is the time where kids into Kita, they are into Einschulung phase or the school registration, or those who are into the Grundschule or the primary school, they get into the next level. So the first quarter of this year, or year yearly, the first quarter is always into school hunting. So normally for people like us who are here since almost two decades, we get a very unusual call during this time whom we don't know at all. Why? Because our kids are, and myself being a mom of two kids going to German school. So they are like you not know, wanting to know so many topics, so many questions. So we thought that from some other thing, why not this question? So here we go. And we are very happy and proud to have Mrs. Such to have accepted this invite immediately. She was very enthusiastic when we invited her and informed about Team Samvad. And uh, she was in fact very enthusiastic also to know what was our previous topic and the work is all about from our team. So once again, Mrs. Such, welcome to this Samvad session. And uh, I should apologize this in, that in between, I might be addressing her as Fra Such, Fra Such because my kids go to the school where she is now principal of Van and Siemens Gymnasium. So we have been always used to, I mean, I'm always used to calling her Fra Such, Fra Such. That's why it can happen. Voice <laughs> English <laughs> mix. And uh, uh, yeah, as we say, uh, timing of the year is what uh, made us to take this uh, topic for summer session. So before we get into the actual conversation, I would like to show you one slide where the flow of our entire conversation, we, I'm going to explain to you. And uh, in between, as soon as we sent out our flyers, we prepared a Google form and we are very happy that within no time, we have got wonderful response from many, many parents across Germany asking many, many questions right from Kita, the kindergarten level, to after school, even after the university and MTech and mechanical engineering degree, everything. 
So we have had a lovely uh, range of questions. And very interestingly, the uh, majority of the questions were condensed on the Uber treat or the shift from Grunschule to gymnasium. All these were uh, um, analyzed ones, we have categorized, and we are going to address that to the best of our ability during our summer session. And at the same time, as I said in this uh, slide, uh, we will start with a couple of questions. And according to the schooling system, we will uh, take up our Samvad. And uh, Mrs. Such, before we take up any questions, she's going to present you a fundamental idea about how the system is all about from Kita to uh, the Abitur and uh, furthermore. So once again, Prasuch, welcome. And audience, welcome to this evening, please. Thank you, Rashmi, for the invitation. It's a pleasure being here. Have you already uploaded my um, we have it. slide? Can't see it. <laughs> no, the okay. one after which she which uh, Shriharijji sent. Not this. This is the flow what I was talking about. Maybe I'll just touch upon this very quickly. As you can see from the left, the kindergarten. Then we go and we address the concept regarding Grunschul and Ubertrit. Then we go to the middle school or the Unterstufe, what they call it from grade five to seven. Then we talk about the Mittelstufe, then pre-university or the Abitur level. And then, but beyond all this, at the end, we are going to touch a very important topic. This is what our main headline is all about. Ecosystem of the school is an ecosystem of kid, parent, and the school. And we are going to address some social competence aspect and role of parents and the expat families because we are, you know, the Indian diaspora is all about. Yeah. The other pictures of Mrs. Sitch. Uh, Nikhilji, mm. present it for you. Mrs. Sitch, if you has, can you open the mic and see? Yeah, I can see it now. It has disappeared. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just wait for the picture to reappear. We have basically two um, pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I chose a very simple picture because I want everybody to very clearly understand what our system consists of and what it's like, because it's not that difficult um, to understand once you see the main path um, um, for example, I would like to start with primary school, which in German is called Grundschule, okay? You send your kids to Grundschule at an entrance age at six, of six years. And some parents are not sure if your kid is too young or too old. So you have to do a kind of Schuleingangstest, a test um, with a doctor to see if your kid is ready to join school, to go to school. If not, it doesn't matter. Just leave it for another year, okay? Um, um, research has shown that it's not a good idea to um, have your kid go to school too early. Better late than too early, okay? If it's seven years old, fine, no problem. The normal entrance age is six though. And um, you go to a primary school, which is kind of a common school for four years. And this is where you, first um, acquire knowledge of math and German. And um, this school focuses on your personal development, on the kid's personal development, and it helps your kid to um, sort of to develop a kind of value system. Okay. And then it gets really nasty at the end of year four, because it's like uh, Rashmi put it a minute ago. She said it's school hunting, okay? Because everyone uh, wants to go to gymnasium, which I personally can't understand and do not favor for certain kinds of kids, okay? Because not every kid is suitable. Not Gymnasium is not a school for every kid. Um, next week on the on the 2nd of March, I will be um, welcoming parents for an information evening um, concerning class five. And I will be talking to them about the basic requirements you need or your kid needs to fulfill if it wants to go to a gymnasium, okay? It has to be really quick on the uptake. It has um, to be um, full of imagination. 
um, able to uh, think um, in analytic ways, able to concentrate for a long time, to remember well, to remember lessons well, to work dutifully and um, to be an eager worker, okay? And if your kid um, is not or does not show interest in school or that much interest in school in year four, don't send it to gymnasium, okay? Because there is Realschule is a good option, okay? Realschule is um, kind of, um, it's a school for five years from class five to class 10. And it gives the kid the general education and basic knowledge of professional training. And you can see that in the slide after year 10, your kid gets the first certificate. And this is a very valuable and good certificate that helps he, uh, him or her to find a good job. Or if the marks are very, very good, um, your kid can re-enter gymnasium in so-called Eingangsklassen. There are in, for example, in Munich, there are some um, uh, schools, gymnasien that offer Eingangsklassen, which means first you do Realschule, you do really well, and then you go back to gymnasium and finish your educational or your school career at the gymnasium. And um, there is a good option is also Mittelschule, okay? Um, it's, um, there are two um, ways. You can go to Mittelschule from year five to year nine or from year five to year 10. It depends on your abilities. And this school, Mittelschule, focuses on jobs. It focuses on occupations and you um, finish that school with a secondary school certificate. So all of these three schools are offer a good um, certificate at the end, with the gymnasium being the only one to offer um, an entrance as a qualification for university entrance. But after Realschule, you can also go to a technical college or an upper vocational school for another two or three years. And you can do A-level exams here, up here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but even after Realschule, there is a way via FOSS, Technical College, or BOSS, upper vocational school, um, to go to university later on um, you can't go to a general university like Ludwig Maximilians Universität in Munich, but you can go to a Fachuniversität, okay, like um, a University of Applied Sciences. And um, Realschule is, is very much different from Gymnasium, N not as to the choice of subjects. They mainly do the same subjects, but the level is a bit lower and the, the progress is a bit slower. And so um, it helps the kid um, to learn in its, own, um, in its own time. Whereas gymnasium is very speedy. <laughs> and in between gymnasium, between all these years from year five to year 12, or now from year five to year 13, there is no kind of security net, okay? Um, if you fail, you drop out and you do not get a certificate until you reach class 12 or class 13. And I think this is very dangerous because not all of the kids are able to do well and to get a good abitur. Sometimes it's worth it's worth it or it's better to have FOSS or BOSS certificates and to go to a University of Applied Sciences. So don't worry too much about Realschule and Gymnasium. As I always say, all the roads lead to Rome, which means university in some way, okay? 
Right. Um, I brought a second slide. I don't know if we can show it, but it's just um, it's just what I was talking about. Okay. After gymnast, after um, it's it's sort of it's the roof of what I just showed you. After gymnasium, you get a general certificate that allows for entrance at university. After FOSS and BOSS, you get a certificate that allows for universe entrance at universities of applied sciences. And um, if you um, do well after Mittelschule, the school on the left-hand side, the lowest level of education, it's still fine because you can get a good job and go to a vocational school or a trade school and everything is fine. You can get good jobs. Okay, so our system is very, um, is very uh, transparent and it's, it's easy to switch from one uh, type of school to another type and to re-enter at certain stages. So, lovely. So here we go with the basic information. So with this preamble, I would like to kickstart our somewhat or our conversation. Um, Mrs. Such, starting from the kindergarten phase, there is a very typical question, which is not from this parent, but a, it's a universal question, I should say. Should we do any preparations for a kid before putting into kindergarten? <laughs> I know your face. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, reading is always a good idea. Reading books to your kids, reading stories, okay, playing games, creative games, um, doing, um, um, I can't think of the word now, basteln. What is the word in English? Art. Art. Yes, art. Okay, so just to make sure that your kid um, has, is full of imagination. Um, has good ideas, is creative, um, is interested in books, is interested in, in science. You can do a little experiments, but you shouldn't overdo it really because kindergarten, they will learn a lot in kindergarten. I remember my son even did an English course in kindergarten and he was so happy because after that short course, he thought he was now fluent in English. <laughs> So um, um, yes, you can support your kid, but um, I think it's important that they stay kids and they, that they play a lot. Um, if you want to train logic, um, get Lego, okay? Get, um, yeah, get them to build Lego. I mean, um, this is what, what, um, what you can do, but it's all, everything in a kind of, um, um, spielerisch, okay, um, playing, learning through playing is, I think, is the key word here. This phrase I remember, learn through play. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to request our viewers or audience here that we have really prepared some 35 questions right from Kita to after school phases as I have shown in my slide. So just wait till half of the session is over and then you can start bombarding the questions. Because I'm very <laughs> sure that the following questions are pretty much going to cover most of the aspects what now audience have started pouring in with the questions, yeah? So in line with this phrase, learn through play, first, which I remember very well, the reason why this question has come from different parents is like, I can vouch you, majority of the parents, when they go to India, when a kid is two, three, four year old, back home with our 23 kilos of uh, suitcase, minimum three kilos of books we carry, which talks about alphabets, numbers, tables, and all. You know why? The thing is just because for us in India, we start learning in the kindergarten phase, in the kindergarten with numbers and all. And when I take my child there, he's just playing with the Lego or whatever. <gasps> he's not learning anything. And my, the, my, the cousin of this kid is already into writing the shrug shift. So I think this is a huge difference. With second kid, I remember that I got easier, relaxed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is a normal thing. Perhaps you can insist our viewers that, uh, especially for an uh, Ausland uh, family like us with a non-German background, how best can they improve German Sorry, language? Sorry, I can't hear you now. Nashmi, oh, really? I can't hear you. The 
connection seems to be unstable at the moment. Oh, Siri, can you hear? Give can you repeat your question, please? Yeah. Can hear you. Uh, okay. No, what I was trying to tell, uh, since we here in now today in the, mm -hmm. the audience, we are all non-German speaking uh, families. Uh, could you just give a tip how best to improve German language skills of mm -hmm. the child before mm -hmm. getting into during I tell you what. I tell you what, watch television, make them watch television. <laughs> TV is the easiest and fastest way to learn German. Kids series, kids stories. I remember my son uh, watching uh, Mondbeer all the time, okay? And he remembered the phrases and he knew them by heart. Make them watch TV. And um, about a half a year ago, um, um, a young kid came to my school and uh, she came from India actually. She was only 11 and her parents spoke English only and she spoke German. And I said, how did you learn German? And she said, well, I downloaded an app. <laughs> and I learned through this app, she learned German to a certain extent. So the easiest way really is to listen to uh, German television. Okay, lovely. And even That's if it doesn't fun. sound very pedagogic, <laughs> it's a very quick and effective way to learn a foreign language. Okay, thank you. And to learn about our culture as well, okay? Because mm -hmm. you can see the typical figures, um, the typical stars from, um, um, from these children's films and children's books. And so they get German culture as well. At the mm -hmm. same time, they get to know German mm -hmm. culture. You said that. Moving on to the next topic about the groom schooling, and for that, the topic is all about the hot topic is Einschulung or the school registration. Some of the basic question what people are talking, uh, yeah, maybe in line with that, uh, I would like to say to audience also that uh, there is something called Fokus Deutsch for uh, kids who are in the Vorschul Alter or the preschool Alter, that the kindergarten also, when they make out that the child is not fit enough with German language to go to groom schule, then they can avail this option as well. It's called as four course Deutsch is one thing. Moving on to Einschulung, there's a question like how best to decide um, is the German language know how is a must or as an expat family when they come here and the child is already six years old, how to deal with the German language difference because it has to start with Grundschulers immediately. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I think it doesn't it doesn't really matter. We have got kids that start at the age of 11 with no German knowledge at all. And they start at a different level at gymnasium. So I don't think it's necessary that your kid um, learns German before joining Grundschule because um, kids will take up the language very, very quickly. Okay, so don't worry too much about that. And in the first two years, if I remember correctly, there is even a law, there's a regulation in the Schulordnung, in the um, school law, saying that um, German is not to be marked. So you get kind of um, a free shot at German for two years because um, um, only math or, or other subjects um, are marked. You get marks in the test, but German is considered um, to be sort of um, a no-go. It's not um, marked yet. And um, you have got, a um, can't think of the word, frist. Um, you, you timeline. Take, yeah, a timeline. And you can, um, for two years, you won't get, won't have problems. And after two years, your kid will be fluent. It's normal with uh, small kids. They learn very, very quickly. What is so, the class called us? Is it integration class A? or e class in Grunschule as well, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Then uh, they want to know a difference between the Gunstock Schule and normal Schule, be it gymnasium or Grunschule. Mm -hmm. Because normal Gunstock Schule. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion, uh, um, we used to be, a, uh, we used to have Gunstock's class, okay, at uh, our gymnasium and we, uh, found out that parents were not really interested in having their kids uh, in Ganztagklassen all the time because you lose contact to your kid. 
it stays at school every day from eight to four, from eight to five, gets home at five, and somehow uh, the, the contact within the family is lost. But I think it's a good idea for people coming from abroad to put their kids in Ganztagsschulen and Ganztagsklassen because this is where they learn German, okay? At home, they will be speaking their mother tongue. They won't learn uh, German. So if you put them in Ganztagsschulen, they will be cared for by um, a professional team. They will learn German. They will do their homework there and you don't have to discuss, as you said, <laughs> for dinner or at home, you don't have to discuss school and homework all the time. So I, am, I think um, it is a good way to learn German very, very quickly to have your kid at school every day from in full day care. But um, you have to see the other side that somehow um, you don't get to see much of your kid. Yeah, but I can vouch that even in spite of that, still, it will be a topic of discussion in our dinner table. <laughs> 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 because I remember very well when it comes to House of Gabe concept that we are so much programmed that when a child comes home for a House of Gabe, we not only make sure that Mr. Fatty or are you done? We also <laughs> go through that, we correct that. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, one day a teacher called me and she said, are you correcting your child's homework? I said, yes. Oh, that's fine, actually. I know that he or she is very good at it, but don't do that. And I was like surprised. Then she said, no, your job is only to see that they are done. And my job is to correct and see her level of understanding. This is such a big difference for us culturally. Mm -hmm. It was a shock for me. I fully agree with the lady or who called you or <laughs> the teacher who called you. Because, see, if you correct... The mistakes your kid makes me as a teacher I don't see your kids mistakes and I think I explained it very well and the kid got it all right because my lesson was so uh, great okay uh, whereas on the contrary if I see your kids mistake I know how to help where to help and where it where your kid got something wrong and I know the level of knowledge but if if parents correct their kids' homework at home, I never, I will never find out about what the kids actually know. So please don't. Check that the homework is done. Check that the school bag, everything is, is sorted, okay? But never ever correct your kids' homework because we get the wrong impression. We think your kids are perfect. I'm very sure from today, many moms here will have a lot of free time in our households. It gives you more free time as well. <laughs> I'm very sure. Okay, there's one last question about the location of the school. How is it determined, be it a gun uh, the Grundschule? So maybe you can explain shortly that it is. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Um, there's a question regarding the Einschule and the Grundschule. How mm -hmm. is the location determined? I believe that it's a simple ah. answer that's from the two okay. kilometers. Right? Yeah. It's, um, we call it Sprengel, okay? Um, you have to go to the nearest school where you live. You can't choose for Grundschule and Mittelschule, you cannot choose the school. You have to go to the school which is closest to where you live. And this is called Sprengel or Schulbezirk, okay? And there is a certain area and this certain area belongs to a certain school or yeah, the kids that live in this area have to attend a certain school. I can, um, you know how to spell the word uh, Sprengel? I can put it in the chat, um, Sprengel Prinzip, okay? It's the principle of having to join the nearest um, school where you live no choice fantastic whereas no, no. with gymnasium it's different you can choose the best one i was about to ask this <laughs> one <laughs> we have covered a little bit about kita or the kindergarten stufe or the phase grundschule pretty much we have covered now the hot topic of the evening is all about from fourth to fifth or the uber treat phase what they call in germany that is from grundschule to the 
next level so okay. oh uh, is it my tone siri or shreya ji or uh... yeah you can it's okay okay no, so we can hear you okay. yeah okay. please now we repeat. move on to yeah. the next hot topic uh, of the evening it's all about from the brun shule to the next level which is very actually at the gymnasium and this is called ubertrit phase here or the transition yeah mm -hmm. so can you just um, quickly mention our audience criteria for this uh, gymnasium real shule and uh, nikhil shule entry criteria criteria okay are you thinking of requirements the no that need to be fulfilled yes if you want um, to go to gymnasium you need um certain marks and um the three main subjects are um german math and heimat und sachkunde they say hsu hsu and um you have to have an average of 2.33 i just put it in the chat to be allowed in or to register with gymnasium if you have if you divide the three marks by three and you get 2.66 you have to do probeunterricht okay um which is a three day um testing period where we test your kids in german in math um uh, orally and on a written basis and at the end um you in order to uh, succeed you need to have a uh, um, 334 you can't um or 344 you can't have 4.0 um otherwise you will not get in there is an exception though um there is a law saying if the parents insist they can also register with gymnasium even if the kid did not succeed in probeunterricht but then it's at your own risk and i would not recommend it because already doing probeunterricht is a great stress for your kid and either it succeeds and does well okay but if not i prefer you um i prefer to take or i recommend taking a different path okay and as i said earlier in the discussion i said um you decide okay you know your kid best look at your uh, sons look at your daughters how do they respond to school do they like school are they full of imagination are they quick on the uptake do they like learning and reading do they have a good language um good language knowledge knowledge of language okay um do they have a good choice of words can they think um um problem oriented are they um able to work in teams do they have a certain range of interests and only if you get a feeling that all of this is true for your kid then i think gymnasium is the right choice i my former principal always said to the parents at the uh, informationsabend at the information evening he said um please do please do not send your kid if you're not sure about gymnasium okay um it will be very unhappy it will be a hard way and what is most important is not the marks not the career of the school career but that your kid is happy and your kid stays healthy a lot of kids um freak out during uh, class 5 to uh, um 13 because they cannot cope with the level of stress they are exposed to so watch your kid and if you're not sure make an appointment go and see the school's principal take your kid and have um have them ha have an interview yeah come in for an interview we always offer interviews and we um watch your kids closely we we are experts we know when we see them when we talk to them we know if they are um apt to follow our classes and our 
uh, system. Uh, this is basically uh, one kind where they are already enrolled into the school and then they, you know, uh, get to see the either easy way of dealing or difficulty, for example. But any tips from your side, how during the Uber trip itself, before getting admitted to the school, mm -hmm. how during that phase itself, because the problem stems from the fact that in India, when once our child is into grade one, till 10, I don't have to worry, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is why we are all wondering, like in fourth, oh really, you know, that is the first wonder point. Mm -hmm. And then comes the fact, why? Well, what makes him or her to feel uh, difficulty? Let him sit and read, you know, mm -hmm. because as I say again, it's a hot girish, so you have to go through it. <laughs> so we still yes. need to understand what defines in fourth for us as parents. What defines? Sensitivity. Uh, so it's still, uh, we are clueless um, as a parents how to uh, sensitize this and take our own decision with the help of teacher or without the help of mm -hmm. teacher to decide if my child is fit uh, you know enough to get into this path of gymnasium mm -hmm. or the young should mm -hmm. you are not the only ones to be clueless okay believe me <laughs> <laughs> it is a very difficult phase and all parents in grade four are the same they're restless they're stressed out the kids are stressed out. Um, I remember my son wanting to go to a gymnasium. Absolutely. Okay. He was crazy. He was never, he was forever preparing the tests. And I told him, stop it now. Okay. Because you are a kid. You need free time. You need um, time to yourself. So um, really, I can't give a good piece of advice here. Uh, honestly, just watch your kid and make sure it stays sound and safe and healthy and it likes school okay because if you overdo it in class four it might result in in the opposite in a reaction in a, so that your kid doesn't want to school go to school at all all kind of um um aversion, uh, aversion yes even exactly yeah. so be careful I remember, this, I remember this free time concept i remember that uh, when i was ranting with you that our kids doesn't get that much of homework back home and you said why i said they don't sit till five or six o'clock they're done within <laughs> no time and you were angry with me saying they need free time they have to go out and play you yes. know so it's, it's as i say repeatedly i'll repeat this my i still believe in what i said when we met, when we formally met, I am um, kids that kids are kids. Okay, let them stay kids as long as they can, because your working life is long enough, their working life will be long enough as well. Yeah, thank you. So moving on, could you just give a uh, blick about the different branches or the Zweig in terms of the Naturwissenschaft or the science or the musicalishes and things because still even for kids are into gymnasium, they're still clueless about this choice of different branches in gymnasium. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you start in class five, um, with our school, we offer two branches, for example, a scientific branch and a linguistic branch. And when you start in class five, you usually start with English in class five. And then the year after in class six, you have to choose a second language, which would be French or Latin, okay? And still, you haven't decided which branch you want to take. It's just a decision of which second language you want to take. You haven't decided on the branch yet, just a second language. And then in year eight, you have to decide if you want to do languages, which is the linguistic branch, or if you want to do science, which would be chemistry. So you choose chemistry if you want to do the, um, the, the scientific branch. And if you want to take the linguistic branch, you take another, a third language even. In our school, it's Italian. And schools offer different kinds of linguistic branches. So you can also, there are also schools that offer Spanish or Russian or what have you, okay? Different. Um, uh, different languages in different linguistic branches. But in the Naturwissenschaftliche Zweig, the scientific branch, 
you always choose chemistry, okay, in class eight. And um, if there are other schools, they have um, focus on music, but uh, I have to admit, I don't know much about the musical branch, but they have more music lessons, okay? There is a difference in the schedule then, and they have got more music lessons um, instead of scientific lessons. So that's, that's, that's just about it. But uh, the decision is only made in class eight, not beforehand. Okay, and there is also one more called Humanistische Schwarz. Yes, and this is a school where you start with Latin, okay? Um, I would like to add one idea. As you are from um, uh, a non-German country, okay, you can choose in class eight, you can choose or your kid can choose its mother tongue as a foreign language. Um, we call it geänderte Fremdsprachenfolge. I will type it into the chat, geänderte Fremdsprachenfolge. And it means that um, for your kid, German is already a, a foreign language, okay? So uh, yes, and then French or Latin would be the third foreign language, so to speak. So um, they can decide in class eight that they want to take, for example, um, Hindi as a foreign language. And then we have to write a letter of um, application, something like that, to the ministry, to the Department of Education. And they either grant that choice or not. Okay, they agree. And then you get a letter back saying, yes, your kid will be tested in Hindi and doesn't have to take neither French nor Latin, which is a good option. Okay. Especially if they come and expat family comes from India at this time of juncture. Exactly. And we've got an international class at our school in class eight. And we have got, um, I think, about 12 different geänderte Fremdsprachen folgen there. We, uh, they, the kids in this class, they take English and their mother tongue, and they will be tested in Russian, in Hungarian, in Serbian, in Croatian, in what have you, all these different languages. We wrote to the Ministry of Education and they found the um, examiners. And who teaches them? Who takes them uh, further? There is no, there are no lessons. You have to learn all by yourself. You have to study by yourself. And then there are two tests one test every half term. Oh, this is very good piece of information, at least the child, uh, because already in India, in the middle school, in the Unterstufe, they are already exposed to one Indian language mm -hmm. as a primary mm -hmm. language, just like mm -hmm. Deutsch here. So he or she will be definitely at ease yes. for this particular language. And that reduces the burden here of taking another language like French or Latin. Mm -hmm. This is a very good piece of information. Thank you. But it only Thank works you. as of class eight, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, class eight. I remember this. In fact, I tried uh, to say to our viewers that uh, in Munich, two schools have been chosen to have this e class or international class A, one in north of Munich and the other one is south of Munich, which is Werner von Siemens Gymnasium, headed by Mrs. Such. Yeah. Now I was just explaining them about our e class A. Can't hear you. Um, yeah, yes, okay. Okay, no, I was just explaining uh, to the viewers saying that there are just two schools from Bildung uh, for Referat chosen in Munich, which is one in north of uh, Munich, one in south, which is Werner von Siemens Gymnasium for this E class, mm -hmm. international class, right? Yes, this might also be an interesting piece of information for some of you because our school offers um, an international class as of class eight. And the one school in the north, it's called um, Leon Feuchtwanger Gymnasium in Milbertshofen. They offer um, an international class as of class five, okay? Oh. Or six, uh, fifth graders can get in too. It depends on their age, okay? And the good thing is um, you have to do a test, a German test. And um, if you uh, get to level B1, then you get in. And if not, you can do 
different kinds of do um, German classes at, in different programs. I don't know whether you have heard about INGIM. I will type it in. INGIM is a program at the Hausenstein Gymnasium in GIM. It's a German program, a German class program, which lasts for six months. And um, you have to choose one Stammschule headquarter, which would be Werner von Siemens Gymnasium. And you leave Werner von Siemens Gymnasium for six months and go to, in, to the in-gym program. You could learn in there and then comes back to our school and is reintegrated mm. so that's a good program and there is also a program called sprint and uh, i think there are also deutsch classen you can uh, send your kid to if you come directly from india to germany but the best um, idea is to contact uh, bildungsberatung international Bildungsberatung International, because they speak, I don't know, about 40 different languages and they explain our system even in Armenian or Azerbaijan talk or whatever. Okay, so uh, Bildungsberatung International is the place to go in Munich if you need um, advice. Fantastic. Um, could you just also give an insight about Gesamtschule? Somebody um, wrote more time as Gemeinschaftsschule. It's not Gemeinschaftsschule, mm -hmm. so it's called Gesamtschule or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know much. I don't know nothing about Gesamtschule, I have to admit, okay, because it's not in the Bavarian system. <laughs> and I don't want to tell you any nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just for the viewers, I would like to say that because somebody asked about the orienteering two phase, so mm -hmm. it's just uh, from class mm -hmm. five to six. Mm -hmm. Uh, in case you're not sure about your kid, whether they are Schule or Gymnasium, again, mm -hmm. there is this uh, confusion, mm -hmm. clash of thoughts, then uh, these two is a kind of test period that mm -hmm. you put your child mm -hmm. and then again, based on the performance of the kid, then it can choose in grade seven, he or she can choose in grade seven to go to Real Schule or Gymnasium. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but but be careful, there's only one Orientierungsstufe in the whole of Germany. <laughs> And it's in Munich, yes, and yes. it's in our school center. <laughs> exactly. So there is one um, question: How is this arbitrary recognized outside Germany from uh, gymnasium? How is this arbitrary from gymnasium recognized outside Germany? How is this arbitrary? No. Recognized. Recognized. Okay. Internationally. Outside. Yes. Yes. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Bavarian school system is, I think it's um, appreciated worldwide. So if you do your A-level exam at a Bavarian gymnasium, you're done. It's, it's perfect, okay? So you can go to university anywhere uh, in the world you want Thank to go you. to. And um, someone wrote um, in, your, in your question, someone wrote, why do you not put more focus on English? We do. We start in class five, we offer English classes uh, up to the level to C1. When our kids leave school, they are fluent. They speak at a level of C1 and they can go to any university in the world. So we do place a, a, a focus and we do um, a lot to um, make English uh, important. We even have at our school an English day to show the importance of the English language. We celebrate English Day every year. Celebrate, yeah. Again, moving back to the Ubert with Faze, um, mm -hmm. search, they are asking, can we apply simultaneously to both Realschule and Gymnasium at the same time? Someone is putting a question. No, you can't. Answer. No, you can't. Okay. Because I tell you why. Because when you go to, to the on registration day, when you go to Realschule or Gymnasium, you have to leave the Übertrittszeugnis, okay, the certificate, the original Übertrittszeugnis, you have to bring it and you have to leave it at the school you want to register with. Why is that? 
It's because we need to know how many pupils want to go to which school. If everyone applies at two or three or four different schools, the city of Munich will not get an uh, overview over all the kids applying or registering for schools. You can't, you just don't see clear anymore if everyone registers with <laughs> two or three different schools. Okay. Um, furthermore, into this, they're asking how are the seats allocated based on the applications or how is that? Mm -mm. Based on your looks. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, um, the seats are allocated uh, on the, it's not Sprengel Prinzip, but it's, um, it depends on where you live in a three kilometer radius. Okay, if you live within three kilometers from the school, we will take you on. If we don't have free seats, we will have to, um, we can't take you on. So it depends, really, it depends on the Schulweg. Yeah. Only. The only good. on the distance, only. Yeah, yeah. And, so. okay, there is a second uh, thing, it depends. If you've got um, brothers or sisters at the same school, okay, then you uh, are at an advantage. Okay, but I, I, I would like to add to this that I remember um, if your child doesn't get a seat in the particular gymnasium that you apply, the school itself takes in uh, res parallel responsibility to find another way for you, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. not that they send you back home and you have to struggle again. No, on registration day, everyone can register. Everyone, everyone who likes to be at our school can register. And we will have a look at all the registrations. We will look through them and we will say, okay, let's just take Geschwisterkinder, okay? Brothers and sisters, next step. Uh, who lives in the in the area, okay? Next step, do we still have free seats? Yes, we do, okay, we can take on anyone. Um, do we have still free seats? No, we don't. Okay, so we have to tell these um, parents that they can't uh, register with us. But we will then contact the Ministry of Education and we will tell them that um, we haven't got any free seats and we've got too many registrations and they find a solution. They work overnight until the next day. <laughs> okay. Now, there's one more question regarding how do we look for the school school's ranking? Where is the source of information? Which school is the best? How do we weigh in this option is a question. <laughs> Other than Google Maps, somebody pointed out. Mm -hmm. um, we are not private schools, okay? We don't have to be ranked. Yeah, we are not in a concurrence. We are not, it's not a competition, okay? Usually you go to the school which is close to your home because you don't want to lose time, valuable time playing. <laughs> you don't want to use, to lose time. So um, there is no ranking, no official ranking, okay? But every school has got its profile. And I think you shouldn't choose a school on the basis of a ranking because humanistic uh, schools they will have a better ranking they will have better marks because they have better pupils they have more diligent pupils working harder okay but we're talking about um, personalities okay we're not talking about nerds all the time so um i know that our ranking is um not <laughs> as of the 14 gymnasium is not between the first five okay easily but we like people so you should choose we like kids you should choose the school you like best not the school that ranks best okay. um, is there any difference between schools in the city and schools out in the outskirts uh, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, uh, the question predominantly comes from the fact that we are all expat families, and uh, our, obviously the choice of our 
homing, uh, housing depends on where we get the job. So mm -hmm. when once you come from India, you don't know the difference between Munich city and mm -hmm. Otterbrunn or Egmatic because they still don't know. They just know that it's a city. Mm -hmm. So in case a parent gets a job, let's say in Miesbach, mm -hmm. so they don't know. They can't see Miesbach on par with Munich in terms of school, you know, mm -hmm. other than the facilities. So it's mm -hmm. a Clash I think um, all the communal and state uh, schools, the gymnasium and the schools are comparable, really. We have got the uh, same curriculum, we have got the same Schulaufsicht, the same uh, ministry that is responsible. Um, I don't think that there is much of a di difference. There's one difference that I experience every day, okay? My son's school is um, six kilometers from where we live and he has to take the bus, which only arrives three times a day. Okay, so transport, public transport is a problem. But as to teaching subjects, um, there is, I mean, perhaps inner city schools are a bit more rough. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but they are also more interesting because you find all kinds of people there. Look at our school in the center of Munich. Okay, we've got 60 different nationalities, which is great because we learn from one another and we are a mirror of society. Whereas uh, school in, uh, in the outskirts where only people from the area go to, they don't mix and mingle with other people from different nations. So I think uh, inner city schools, they might be a bit rough sometimes. I don't know, I don't know, I don't think so. I love my school, okay, it's, but um, yes, um, outside in the outskirts, life is perhaps a bit easier, I don't know, but as to the teaching and the topics and subjects, it's, it's the same, there's no difference. Okay, and now comes uh, a very burning point for expert families, how is the switch from bilingual system to state schools to a German talking, school. You're talking private schools? Not necessarily private schools, yes, in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's been there, done that every mm -hmm. year. Um, how, how is it, um, how to, you mean how to change from one school to the next in the system? The change and how do you accept, what are your criteria for a child to take, mm -hmm. how to go through this transition? Mm -hmm. um, We take on kids from bilingual schools, yes. Um, only they have to do an ent entrance examination in different um, subjects if they come from a private school because we're not allowed to take them on, on just like that. We have to test them. If, well, they have to do entrance exams in certain subjects four or five subjects, different subjects in September. And if they don't do well, we can't take them on into the class they applied for, but we are free to take, to downgrade them, okay? For example, if they applied for class eight and the entrance exam was so la la, okay, wasn't very good, we can still offer them a seat in seven and say, um, restart again in seven with us as a guest student. You're welcome, okay? But we can't take you on in class eight because your entrance exams weren't good enough. Mm. It's, um, it's always a problem for kids wanting to change from the private sector into the public sector, okay? It is stress because you can't change without uh, taking exams. Okay, this basically comes from the fact, uh, Prasuch, that um, when once we land here and our kid is already into school age, let's say six, seven, eight, the first thing is to put into a German system, we obviously get very insecure because I myself don't know German language, so how do I make my kid to understand the stuff or the syllabus, whatever? So this insecurity leads us to this option, point one. So I have seen many families with time. Also, one uh, fact I would like to highlight to you from the perspective of our Indian expat communities, 
they come here with uh, initially for two or three years of web fatra in the companies. So obviously, even they don't have a long standing uh, idea, let's say long term idea. How long are we going to stay here to take risk to put my child into German system? And then after three years, I have to go back to India. By that time, he or she will be in grade four, five, six, which is already the uh, syllabus are like mountain high in India as well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, in the winter fair, you won't believe that. So this insecurity leads us. And then I've seen many families, they realize that they have a long-term contract with the employer or something like that. And then, or they would like to stay here on a long-term basis. Mm -hmm. Then comes their thought process. Okay, how about switching now back to German system? So here is how you get to, I'm very sure, yearly, as I, we have um, discussed long back, at least five to six applications, you get that every year, right? Yes, easily. Easily, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's one uh, burning question again. Um, other than the syllabus or the class aspect, what are the other different extracurricular activities a school offers in German system? Okay. What are and the you? other? Okay. Other than the syllabus aspect, what are the other extracurricular activities offered by schools here in Germany? <laughs> how, how long, how much time do you have? Um, loads, okay. Um, what do we offer? I mean, um, in the afternoon we offer Wahlunterricht, okay? Wahlunterricht, which ranges from um, uh, uh, mountain biking to um, skateboarding to, to tennis, to, um, parkour, music, uh, all kinds of music, arts, um, uh, sustainability, gardening, rooftop gardening, um, bees. We've got bees on our roof. <laughs> we produce our own honey. Okay, so you can see there are loads of extracurricular activities and we insist that, pair, uh, that kids who stay in full day care until quarter past four, we insist that after their homework, they do some project work, upcycling, um, biking, um, playing an instrument, because you can't always only think of uh, studying. It's not possible. Okay. So also called Arbeitsgemeinschaft. Okay? Arbeitsgemeinschaft. AG is genau. <laughs> yeah. I just want to insist, uh, bring this point to our audience that normally either a day of Einschulung or the registration or after the start of the school year, you get a list of what all your school offers and then the child brings it home to, your, to you for you can make a choice and make a signature. It's called Arbeitsgemeinschafts listed because a lot of parents asked about this. And I think good. we have covered pretty much all concerning to Uber Treat and we have to move on to other aspects furthermore beyond gymnasium or uh, grade 10 and 12. Moving on, um, I want to give an information to our viewers that how we call middle school from five to seven, here they call it as Unterstufe. Then eight, nine, 10 is called what we call as high school. They call it as Mittelstufe. And then comes the next next aspect called Abitur is just the final exam, but that is called as Oberstufe. So we have a very um, regular, and you have faced that, Mrs. Sitch. How do we make a choice for these subjects in grade 10? Because we are programmed to choose our subjects in grade 10 for 11 and 12 based on what my kid want to do in university. For example, mm -hmm. bio is a must, then he or she wants to do medicine or physics chemistry for engineering subject. But here it's different. So you know, would you like to shed some light about mm -hmm. these concepts? It's different because it's more general, okay? It's not that specific. It doesn't focus on one um, aspect. Um, um, of course, I mean, I chose English and French because I wanted to become a teacher for English and French, okay? it was quite natural for me to uh, uh, choose these um, subjects and then go to university and study these, um, the language, study languages. But um, with us, you are, 
quite free, okay? You finish your A-levels in whichever subjects you choose. And then later on, you can, you have got a wide range of options you can choose from as to your university career. You do not have to focus um, beforehand. If you already know what you want to study, it makes sense. I'm not saying don't do it, okay? It makes sense to focus if you already know what to study. If you don't know where your journey leads to, just, yeah, um, just choose the, uh, the subjects you are interested in because then you will get more credits and the credits count for your A-level exams and for your final mark. So it makes sense to choose something that interests me, even if it's got nothing to do with the career you choose later on. Okay, thank you, because this is a very uh, general question posed by every parent when a child mm -hmm. comes to grade 10. Mm -hmm. and end of grade, by the half year of grade 10, we have to choose the subjects. And then uh, when my child is not choosing biology, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> have a chance to become a doctor oh she don't have physics or chemistry then can, can't she become an engineer mm -hmm. you know they starts the uh, clash of uh, uh, the process the thought processes so i remember i would like to share this very quickly with our audience that i remember um, there will be a team in every gymnasium called as oberstufen coordinator they do this in forband in grade 10 for your child children and uh, one of the teacher, Mrs. Greg, she told me that go for the subjects which your child is good at. So she or he has got the ability to score the best in Abitur. And that becomes the basis for your yes. future applications for university. Yes. This is a very different thought process. So this is collect a... credits, collect points. You need them for your A-level exam. Scoring. Yeah. This one question, in spite of being in Real Shule, how can a child still get into technical courses like engineering um, like or medical? Did you hear me? No, <laughs> sorry. Okay. okay, there's a question again, which can be repetitive because you already explained that in the slide between a shift from Real Shule to gymnasium after grade 10, the possibility you explained already. Mm -hmm. There's a question, can a child still um, manage to get into technical course like engineering after passing out of Real Schule? Um, after Real Schule, your kid would have to go to FOSS. And uh, FOSS is Fachoberschule. And after attending FOSS for two or three years, it depends. If it only stays for two years, then it can only go to um, uh, a uni for applied sciences, tech technical university. And if it stays in FOSS for three years, it can do, your kid can do the, he or she can do the general um, certificate, the das Allgemeine Abitur, Allgemeine Hochschulreife, and can go to any university he or she wants to go to. Okay. So no, okay. nothing is lost really. <laughs> oh, perhaps one more point is this Übergangsklasse that after 10th, they can still come to the gymnasium, but one more year will be added to that uh, child. Exactly. And there are only four schools in Munich that offer these Eingangsklassen. You call them. I will Ein type it in. Yes. Eingangsklassen. I'm sure many are interested in this aspect. Mm -hmm. It's if you did really well in your Mittlere Reife, the certificate you get after Realschule. Okay. If you did really well here, you can apply. Uh, you, you can join Eingangsklasse in Gymnasium, class 10, and you have to do class 10, 11, 12, and 13 now. <laughs> so you have to do an extra year, but with some pupils, it makes sense because they only discover a bit later that they are diligent workers. Yeah, okay. Um, one more question regarding this uh, Übergangs uh, period is, how do you, uh, what's your advice on Auslandsjahr or the- Absolutely. Exchange? Yes, please go away. <laughs> go away and form your personality, learn to be independent, 
uh, open-minded, uh, widen your horizon. Yes, at any in any case. Okay, I absolutely um, favor kids uh, going abroad uh, in year ten or eleven makes sense. And when they come back, they can vorrücken auf Probe. Okay, they can join the next class and see if they can succeed and manage. And if they can't, they go back to the class underneath. And if they manage, after half a year, they have to show that they can manage, then they can stay in the next class. But I absolutely favor going abroad because it does something to your mind. It does something to your personality. And all the kids that come back, they change. They completely, they are different people. They are self-reliant, they're independent. And this is what we are aiming at. We want to create self-reliant thinking, critical thinkers and um, strong personalities, um, people that believe in themselves and um, uh, they grow, they grow immensely during um, a, an exchange. Yes, please. Talking about self-reliability, I still remember, I would like to share with our audience that whenever I go, I mean, I have a daughter who is now in grade 12 and my son in grade five. Whenever I go to school with any queries, our ex-principal used to ask me, ah, Mrs. Nagarai, he used to call me Mrs. Nagarai, lass die Kinder selbstständig sein, let them be selbstständig. <laughs> and unfortunately, our measure of selbstständig is different from German measure of selbstständig. Yeah, even after these many years, there's still a difference of this uh, understanding the intensity or the measure of selbstständig. Honestly, yeah. So I then I always convince saying that yeah, we cannot keep away from the topic. So obviously, the question arises. So I'm very sure for the audience, there are a lot, lot, many questions talking about the school system, grading and all. And I'm very happy to say that Mrs. Such has agreed to take your questions offline sometimes. And we, somewhat team, will take all your questions apart from the Q&A session. And we will again try to address you back. So follow the Facebook page of Samvad and also YouTube channel. And I'm sure that this is going to be the most talked uh, most addressed topic in the time so far because moving ahead i cannot hold on to mrs such for the next three hours definitely because we have um, uh, promised only for an hour session but we still have three more topics to go which is very typical for our diaspora members indian families the next topic is about social competence and that comes for example uh, they're very sensitive topics and uh, mrs such like um class repetition, three things I'm going to ask you, we can maybe collectively ask that. One is about the Wiederholung or the class repetition, which is very unwelcomed in our society in India. So here it is a surprise when you, in spite of my child being good, when a teacher proposed that, you know, yeah, in this subject, he or she is finding it difficult, so it's better to repeat it just cannot be swallowed by an Indian parent. What is your take on this repetition or the Vidaholung here? Um, what is your take on this? This is a very difficult question to okay. answer, Rashmi. Um, I'm not a great fan of it either, okay? Because I think that the kid doesn't really um, learn much in the in the in the repetition year. Okay, much more. Um, I don't know. I can't, I can't. It depends. Okay. I think if um, someone has got big problems studying at gymnasium, it, it might be better to go to the Altschule. Okay, and then change to gymnasium again later on. I think I don't like this idea of Wiederholung, of, rep of repeating a class. And I know that parents do not want to hear about uh, this piece of advice. Never, ever. Okay. It doesn't, it's not only your culture that 
cannot swallow this idea of a kid having to um, repeat a class. It's everyone, okay? It's just, it's a question of honor. And uh, it doesn't make sense as well because it, the kid is taken out of its environment, out of its class, it has social contacts with and has to start all over in a new class, new contacts and I don't know, I don't like, I don't like it either, but I can assure you it's nothing parents want to be informed about or advised on. <laughs> and I know that a lot of teachers very quickly suggest repeating a year. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's school culture, perhaps, I don't know. It's the way you, we are educated, okay? We always think if you repeat a class, then you will learn more about, you don't, they stay, the, top, the problems stay the same, okay? If not, bigger. So I'm not, mm. I'm not happy with um, repeating a class. I'd much rather advise that a kid goes to a different kind of school Okay, chooses a different form of school and comes back later on um, or goes to FOSS. FOSS is a perfect way of, um, uh, for kids who, um, who don't do that well in gymnasium. Okay, FOSS is perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, there's one uh, sensitive topic I try my best to frame this um, as a kid and as a parent, how to deal with the racial slurs or uh, negative remarks for a child, especially when it comes to the best friend, for example, or let's say a child has only a couple of kids in the block as a best friends or good friends in the class, but yet the child has to face certain, yeah. How do we deal with that as a parent? Mm. Um, you need to address it, okay? You need to talk to the head teacher of the class, to if it doesn't stop, to the principal. And um, but I think it's the school's job or task to train kids um, to see that. Um, in th that um, differences are, um, that diversity is an asset, okay? So we have got a lot of programs um, like critical whiteness programs or um, intercultural trainings and um, that should help the kids to be tolerant and to accept one another and to see that their little microcosm school is, um, is, it just represents the world. That's the world as it is today. It's a mix of different cultures, of different people, of different ideas. And um, they have to learn to be tolerant and to respect one another. And so we offer a lot of programs, but if you encounter um, discrimination at school, you must address it and you must talk to uh, the people in charge. And also parallelly to instill confidence in the child. Exactly. You are the best. What you do is the best. No? At home, yes. At home. Mm -hmm. at home. Yeah, so support your kid at home. Yes, because this is where the point comes, because the way we as Indian parents takes up this issue and approach a teacher or a school class teacher is very different actually, you know, because we really respect the school system. And I can see, um, we can never think of disrespecting um, a teacher or anything. So we are very humble. You might have seen by this time, uh, most of the Indian parents, how we come and knock your doors. So uh, it also creates confusion in us when to approach you, how fast we should react to you. Should we immediately call you, complain to you? Or when the child himself is not able to come to us and not express with us. So these are some situations which is time consuming, energy consuming, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you saying that you have a hang up about approaching school and approaching teachers because you don't know when is the right time? You don't want to be pushy on the one hand, but you don't want to be reluctant or, yeah, okay. Um, you know what, um, we have been working hard on a program uh, for a, a parent school partnership, okay? And we really want uh, you to cooperate with us. So I would say contact us from a very early stage onwards. Um, this is what schools believe in today. It might have been different years ago, but today um, school parent teacher um, head teacher principal relationships are very important. We have got problems. Um, sometimes we've got problems to get parents into school because they are not as you, they are not as much interested in their kids' performance. So when we invite them to a parents' evening, they just don't show up. But we never know if it is ignorance or if they just don't feel um, welcome, if they don't feel appreciated, if they have a hang up about approaching school because it is such an intellectual place. And, um, you know, it's, we don't know why people don't show up, but um, um, please approach school, the sooner the better, the more often the better, um, because this is how um, this whole school community can grow together. And it's also some kind of, um, it's a possibility to create contacts, and to avoid problems that might otherwise um, pop up. I strongly advise you contact us anytime, mm -hmm. any, well, anytime, <laughs> anytime before six. <laughs> yeah, you brought in a very nice topic uh, in this regard because my next question was, what are the different ways a parent can get involved? Mm -hmm. One, a uh, with a teacher relationship to with school system? What are the different ways that we can get involved? Yes, that's one of my favorite topics, okay? Um, I always try to get all the parents in because there's so much we can learn from one another and so much we can do together. Just think about the project days, Rashmi, we did together and about the great Indian arts project and the Indian um, jewelry project. And uh, yes, there's so much we can learn from one another. So um, what can you do teacher wise? Well, you can, you can, you can meet the teacher, okay? And um, make an appointment, talk to the teacher about your kid's progress. Um, you can go to parents' evenings and talk to the teachers. Um, you can um, go to information evenings, um, for example, on the, on the choice of the language or on uh, 10th grade or whatever the school offers. Um, you can go to uh, Elternsprechtag, Parent Teacher Day, and um, um, you can also commit yourself to school um, by joining the Elternbeirat, okay? There's lots of different ways. Elternbeirat is a good way of learning how a school works. It's not only um, a way of meeting the principal. It's not interesting. I mean, you can make an appointment with the principal as well. It's, it's if you are in Elternbeirat, you learn a lot about the school, about the whole community, about the system, about the problems uh, parents have. You can also become a, um, uh, a member of the school canteen board, for example, okay? And discuss the food at school. You can become a member of the Schulforum and um, um, decisions will be taken in the Schul Forum and you will be involved. Your, um, your views will be listened to. You will be listened to, you've got a voice. You can become Klassen Elternsprecher. The short form is Case, okay? 
which means you are responsible <clears throat> for um, one class and you collect all the problems that come up in this class and you take them to Eltenbeirat and to the principal. And what we, uh, what I like best is my treasure map, okay? When you um, register with us, you get um, a form saying, how would you like to participate in school life? And we get all kinds of offers um, and um, uh, all kinds of offers. Like for example, I have got a company and I can offer trainee programs for your kids. I speak Arab and I Arabic and I can translate for you. Okay, I can be interpreter if you need me, or um, I can uh, give a speech on in, on Berufsinformationstag when we talk about um, job orientation day, for example. You can get involved, and you can also um, arrange expert talks or. Um, a meet with other parents um, in Elternstammtisch. I call it meet and mix or meet and mingle. Okay, so there's so much you can do as parents. Um, just get, just commit yourself. Okay, get uh, get involved because it's um, your kids' school, and um, yeah, you can also join us for open open house programs and um, offer what you want to offer. It's not a must, it's, uh, it's uh, a ca you can do it. We, we, we hope you do it, okay? Thank you. Now, this I can uh, vouch for your statement being a member of the Elton Bayrat in the school from the last seven years. So there was once a very uh, strange question posed by another Indian parent in my school, like, do you work because you're a part of Elton Barrett? And I was like, shut, what does that mean? Huh? You don't have to be jobless to become a member of the Elton Barrett, but it's the passion that when my daughter started at grade five in the school, I was not getting enough information because we Indian parent really wants to know, it's not just about box and bag that we pack and send our kid to school, we really give our heart and mind into what is really happening at the school with the teacher, with the friends. So when not much information is brought back home, and that was the point when I was encouraged by you, in fact, to be a part of Elton Bayrat. And uh, it's a great learning curve being in Elton Bayrat for us, especially as an Ausland parent. Second thing, we get to know not just our um, team and just not, but he, he, the Elton Bayrat consists of 13 to 14 members who are also parents of other kids going to our school. So we can exchange. And it's not just that when my kid is in grade five, that I get to meet another grade five parents, but it's a mix of, you know, 11, 10, 8, 7, 6, and all that. It was an, it's an amazing experience. Each tenure, a uh, lot of exchange of ideas and things like that. And I would really encourage parents to come forward and get involved into this. So one last question before we open Q&A. This is very typical to our Indian diaspora uh, expat families. It has been already addressed in the kindergarten stage, but as I said, that we are very keen to get involved into the growth aspect of our kid. Also in terms of his or her development when it comes to the performance at school. So how I, being a non-German speaker, help my kid with his learning process when he's at a German uh, system, completely into German system. How best I can contribute when I don't know German? Well, as you speak English at home, that's one contribution already because English is an A-level subject and will be tested, okay? so. Um, I know from experience that all the um, kids from Indian or who have Indian roots, um, they speak very good English and they do very well um, in English, which is important, okay? Um, how else can you support your kids? Make them do sports, make them play music, make them take their mind off school only. 
because you can only be um, successful if you don't always only focus on education and on school. You need time to yourself. Give this time to your kids. Support them, yes, as to, I don't know, um, buying books, yeah. meeting, uh, meeting their friends after school, um, joining, um, joining, um, for example, a theatre group at the school, uh, joining the orchestra at the school, taking on extracurricular activities, or engaging in competitions as well, like um, um, foreign language competitions or mathematic competitions or excellent sem uh, there are excellent seminars. They are special seminars offered by the Department of Education you can take part in. Okay. okay, you can, and as you said earlier on, boost their self-confidence as much as you can and uh, support them. Yeah, but not only by um, um, making yeah. them tread the mill, <laughs> but yeah. also by giving them some free time and um, yeah. No, I can understand this uh, concern by the parents because it's not just about the overall performance, but mm -hmm. let's say physics, maths or something like mm -hmm. that. And how do I explain? I, I can only say to parents that we as parents, irrespective of your level of German learning, uh, C1, B1 or A1, whatever it is, I'm very sure that you're, I'm telling you mama and mamas and papas here, your German level will definitely increase when your child goes from Kita to Grundschule and uh, uh, gymnasium, whatever. With time, even you learn German. <laughs> and second thing, if you cannot explain in German, try in English because your child already know uh, English well. Concept, to understand the concept is important in physics or maths, but then how he or she puts it in German language up to the child. So you can still get involved as a non-German speaking mama or papa, I can say from my side. So with that, um, I would uh, give the podium to CV for the Q&A. And it was wonderful talking to you, Mrs. Such, as always. And uh, I'm really, I just want to tell our viewers that uh, it's been um, eight years that my daughter is in this gymnasium. And I have involved with Mrs. Such in several projects. And she is a superwoman at uh, Werner von Siemens Gymnasium. Our ex-principal was so proud of her. She takes a lot of initiatives. And in that initiative, the kind of importance and the ideas that she gives chance to parents and the colleagues in the team is just amazing. Yeah, so I'm very happy and honored to be in the school as a parent and work with you, Mrs. Such. It's, it's amazing. It's a lot of learning curve. And um, over to CV for the Q&A. Thank you so much, Mrs. Such. At the same time- Thank you so as... much for your kind words. <laughs> Rashmi, thank you so much. I'm, I feel honored being part of this session. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Perfect. I think that was fantastic. Um, now, I th unfortunately, um, Rashmi, as you said, we can go for hours and uh, <laughs> our, our time is running out. So we have to uh, skip the Q&A session uh, for today. And uh, Ms. Suit, if you agree maybe we could have a kind of a follow-up uh, offline session later on to see any other pending questions and we can try to address the remaining questions from the audience if that is okay with you we can have a, a follow-up with you later on and we for sure we'll assure our uh, participants that we will uh, please um, send us your questions we will try to have a um, another offline uh, Facebook session to address your uh, pending questions. So with that, I uh, request our um, um, member, Samati member, Pawan, to share the word of thanks. Uh, Sririji, one last question to Mrs. Such from my side before the word of thanks. Um, before we wind up, uh, Mrs. Such, your take on Indian parents at our school. Beautiful. Your opinion or your take on Indian parents? 
very eager to be involved, <laughs> very, very open, very active. Yes, and very eager to be part of the team, to be part of this school, part of the school community. Okay, as I said, and not all parents are like um, the parents like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the great message, inspir inspiring for uh, all parents here. Um, Thank you so much, Prof. Sirch. And uh, we, me, and from the whole Samvar team here, and from on behalf of all of our participants here and the audience, we would like to humbly thank you for your time, for your invaluable time. One thing I would like to say here, uh, which struck my mind the most, is when you said not every school is to create any nerds. There are some schools who have to create not only nerds, rather some personalities. That struck personally very well to my mind. And on this, on this behalf, I would like to say thank you so much once again. And I'm sure uh, out of our audience here, there will, be, there will be many, many people who would have faced the same problems or probably the same questions that they would have had in their mind, but somehow they address them in their own ways. So maybe they didn't, there are every, many times there are no really correct answers. There are multiple ways of approaching it. And now people can definitely look at these questions from a, an, an, an absolutely different perspective. And for that, we thank you a very, uh, from, from our bottom of our heart, Thank you so much for your wonderful time. And we would like to keep in touch with you. And um, for any questions, again, it would be nice to be in touch with you and to kind of interact with you once again. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you, Pawan. And uh, thank you very much once again, for, um, Suit. And I also would like to thank you all the participants for the, such a wonderful interactive um, participation. Uh, it's been wonderful. So you, our the chat box was flooding with a lot of questions and we appreciate uh, your patience and also um, putting your questions. We will certainly come back. So thank you very much. And um, the participants overall. So we had uh, 100 participants in Zoom and uh, 100 plus in uh, Facebook. So it was um, such an overwhelming response. And thank you every, again. And please note if you have any questions, if you'd like to reach out to us for the follow up somewhat session, please send us an email to germany somewhat at gmail.com. And also follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You will find us uh, with the hashtag somewhat Germany. So with this, um, Thanks a lot, everyone, for the, for the participation. And uh, also, thanks again for our special guest, for Suj. And uh, we'll, we had a fantastic session. Thank you. And you will see in chat box, there's so much of uh, uh, um, thank you messages. And, uh, and uh, all of us had so many questions. And I think I'm truly convinced that I think most of the questions uh, have been solved and we will certainly in touch with you for any further follow-up questions. Thank you. Super. Thanks once again. Yeah.